Welcome, this is Eva. Uh, today I am uh, showing you how to paint a red barn winter scene. And a big, big thank you to Angela Fair. I have her information below. Make sure you go check out her wonderful YouTube channel. She was kind enough to share her photo with me um, or allow me to use it. So thank you, thank you, Angela. You just rock. Uh, she is just um, really amazing, so uh, make sure you go to her channel and uh, subscribe. She has a lot of good information and wonderful demos that I know you'd enjoy. And she did two versions of this red barn. I flipped um, the photograph so that mine's not 100% the same, and I you know, changed a lot of things. But still, it's Angela's photo. Thank you, Angela. Enjoy. All right, so you can see here I painted this little red barn um, that we're going to be painting. And as you can see, it doesn't look like the picture exactly. The barn is inspired by there because, you know, I, I'm not uh, that intimately familiar with barns that I could just kind of come up without a reference. But, and I have the fence in, but you can see I changed the color and mine only has two going across <laughs> and stuff like that and I moved the trees in a little bit, and I did all sorts of things. Um, and then I did not want those uh, deciduous trees in the background. I wanted evergreens because I wanted something dark to push the barn forward and have that contrast dark against the white snow on the roof. So that's what I mean with artistic license. Just because a photograph looks like that does not mean we are obligated to paint it like that. We just get the information we need from the photograph and then we create our own world. Uh, so we are going to use um, masking fluid uh, to, uh, which is a, a liquid latex that comes in bottles like this. This is my favorite brand. It's called um, Drawing Gum, gum by uh, uh, PBO. I ripped a little bit of the label off there. But you, they come in different, if I can maybe borrow yours, I can show. show. Um, so you can see that, you know, also comes like this from different brands. And uh, this is a Winsor Newton, it's white. And then this one here is uh, the incredible white mask, liquid frisket. Um, so they call it frisket, they call it, um, drawing gum, they call it masking fluid. There's, it has a bunch of different names. Um, and it all doesn't matter, you know, I just happen to prefer the PBO, but that doesn't matter that the others are no good. Not at all. It's just, you know, that's what I like the best. Um, and you can also get, get this here. You can also get the PBO. That's a, a new, a fairly new gadget. Now you can get the PBO in a high precision masking fluid marker. Uh, and it comes like this, like a pen, so it has the fluid in here, and it has this little nip, and it's a plastic, hard plastic. And um, for fine lines, just need to give it a couple of pumps. For fine lines, it's great. So for instance, if I wanted to mask out here on the fence, I could use this one. Now for the roof and stuff, it, it's better to maybe, um, use out of the bottle. But you can see, and mine has a little bit of color and I happen to like that mm -hmm. because then I can see where it's at. Mm -hmm. Why we are putting that on? We're putting that on to save the white of the paper so we don't have to paint around. Because in watercolor, we don't use white paint unless we want to break the rules, which sometimes we have to break the rules if we messed up. But in general, we try to save the whites of the paper as our white. So we have to plan a little bit ahead. And in watercolor, we paint from light to dark. Um, so we, we build up the colors. And it's much easier to darken in watercolor than it is to lighten. Uh, so it's better if you to err on the light side when you're painting, because you can always darken it. So anyway, we're gonna get the masking fluid on so that we can save the white of the roof, off the top of the fence and the trim around the hayloft window and the door here. And if you want to, you can put a little bit on top of the bigger branches. Don't, burn, I mean, we don't even know where the smaller branches are yet because you know, I, I like to draw the, uh, paint those in as I go without having lines to follow. 
because I want to see, you know, I might have a little boo boo I need to cover, then this little branch go goes over there. And these clouds up here are just light blue, right? Yeah, we're not, not yeah, light. we're not, I'm not masking out the snow in front and I'm not masking out the sky. Okay. That we paint in with watercolor and I'm, I'll show you how once we have the masking on. So I'll leave this so you can see it and then I'll get to work, you'll get to work and I'll pour some masking fluid for those that need it. Okay, so um, we are going to paint our background. And as I already said, we're not gonna paint exactly how it is in our photograph because I wanna have these dark pine trees in the back that can really be a, a contrast mm -hmm. to the white snow on the roof. So that's what I like. And you can see here, I put in a few little red dots for some little birdies. Uh, and see with all this ta uh, talking and uh, masking fluid application, my, my colors are completely bone dry. Uh, so, oh, and I also have salt out. We gotta throw a little salt on it. That gives a nice texture. That's it kind of uh, gives some little kind of, uh, almost like a crystal-like um, texture. And then, you know, later we put it on when it's wet and then later we brush it off when everything's dry. So let's see, I'm gonna go with cobalt blue, which is this blue here. And let me show you. Right. Yeah, so it's this blue here, cobalt blue. That's a good sky color. And I don't want my sky like um, super um, bright because you know, I wanna say that there's a little snow in the air. And um, then I'm gonna go with some French ultramarine blue, which is this blue here. And then I'm gonna go with some burnt sienna and maybe a hint of, um, maybe I'll throw yeah, maybe I'll just throw a little bit of the red in. Just, we'll see. We'll Which see. Red, the... uh, my quinacridone red, since I'm also gonna use that for the barn. I like to not use like a gazillion colors. I try to use a limited palette. I mean, I, I paint quite bright, but you actually get often brighter colors by not putting too many colors together because the more you mix colors, the duller and duller and duller they get. And that's what a lot of people, they don't understand. So they think if they mix a ton of bright colors together, it's gonna be even brighter. Not so. You can never mix a color brighter. You can only mix it duller, actually. So, all right. So, got a good spray on there. I'm gonna go, I usually like to use a little bit of a smaller brush or my dagger brush to um, mix my paint. So the first thing I do before I do anything on my paper is I get my puddles of pigment that has been mixed up with water ready. Because if I put water on here and then I go to uh, mix my colors, this is gonna dry. So I get to do it twice. So I like to just do things once if I can. If I can. So here's my cobalt blue. So it's a very light blue. So if we want darks, this won't do it. You know, so it's not a good, that's why that would, if we only had one blue, that would not be the blue I would choose, even though it's such a beautiful blue, because I couldn't get darks then. But uh, for what we're doing here, that's awesome. And it's also a good base color for um, uh, the um, shadow on the snow later on. So we can use it for that. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, that's gonna be my dirty water. There we go. And then I'll get some of the, uh, and see how I'm going on my uh, water control station all the time. Are you, as I said earlier, I don't go like from here and then to here because I can't control that water. I wanna just get that extra drop off. Still want a wet brush, but I don't want it dripping wet. And then you can see I do this, I mush, not dogs, but I mush colors. And what I, why am I doing it? I'm doing it because I wanna make sure that the pigment is completely dissolved in the water. I do not want some little, uh, pieces of pigment floating around there because then when I go from here and I paint on my paper, I get one of those little pigment particles on and psh, get a stripe right where I didn't want it. Never fails. So I'm gonna put myself a little bit of a bigger puddle here. This French, French ultramarine blue. So, so far cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. So, so far, you know, uh, primary colors, right? Blue is one of the primaries color that we use, that cannot be mixed. You cannot mix to get blue. Just like you cannot mix to get yellow and you cannot mix to get red. Those are the primary colors. 
and those three colors mixed in various and sundry combinations, they create all the other colors. And that's why I say, if you just have the three primaries, you're good to go. You can get your oranges, you can get your purples, you can get your greens. If you mix all three together, you get your browns and your grays and all your neutrals and stuff like that. I'm gonna get a little bit of the red here, the quinacridone red, so that's my true red on my palette. Get a little bit of that, not too much. We're gonna use it for the barn later, but um, I sometimes just use my spray, but oh, I forgot. Um, I, I haven't even gotten to the names or anything yet, but those that are borrowing supplies for me, you also need to have a spray bottle. If I didn't already give it to you, remind me. See here? storytelling of dirty water we have now learned if we didn't know it already that if you mix red and blues together you get purple there is a lot of information in your dirty water i mean there's clues all the time we just got to pick up on them so we know that and they, they make it beautiful can you can see that we already get like, that's a good color for for shadows and stuff like that so all right, so I think I want a little tiny bit of yellow just in case because, you know, I'm, I want to have, to me, the trees look more bluish in this kind of a lighting that we're talking about in that wintry feel. But so I don't definitely don't want them like bright green because that would also like put them like right in my face. We're thinking about, you know, we want to say that there's some perspective. Um, so I'm going to go and get a little bit of my transparent yellow and you can see that's this yellow here and that's why I think a lot of people they don't they don't gravitate towards that yellow because they think ew um, but it's actually it is super loaded with pigment and once you get it diluted it is the most glowing beautiful yellow you can imagine it's very very strong and it is actually transparent uh, a lot of the yellows, most of the yellows, they have white pigment in them. And that's why they look beautiful. If I put a little bit of white pigment in here, it would also look very, very beautiful. But it's, I like transparent. And that's one of the reasons I love this one. And the uh, Nickel Aso Yellow from M. Graham is exactly the same. <clears throat> so just a little bit, and you can see how much water I put and how little pigment I put and see how yellow it is. And absolutely brilliant. See what happens now. So now I'm gonna rinse my yellow brush out. Can you see how that completely took it down? And now it's uh, it's still purple, but it's much more muted purple, it's more and more mauvey. Because yellow and purple, they are opposites on the color wheel. They're complementary colors, we call it. And complementary colors, opposites on the color wheel, when you mix them together, they neutralize each other. So that's very good information to know. And this is how mud is created by mixing a bunch of colors together. And as you can see, they do not go brighter, they go duller. So, and we can also say mixing all three primaries together, they neutralize each other. There are many ways of saying it, same thing. Okie dokie, and one more color I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get on. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and it's gonna be another blue. And it's gonna be a really dark blue. So I have my choice between Antwerp blue and indigo for the real dark. So I can choose between this one and this one. Both of them are blues that lean towards more the yellow side. Can you see they're more turquoisey blue? Mm -hmm. Even this one you can, can't really see here because it's almost black when it's really full strength. But here, um, as and when you compare it to the French ultramarine blue, you can see the French ultramarine blue, when you look at this one versus this one, this one almost looks kind of purpley, right? Because it's leaning towards the red side. So what uh, would your inclination be? I'm gonna let you uh, have an input here. Would you prefer to see me paint it with the Antwerp or with the Indigo? And indigo. <laughs> Antwerp, Antwerp and Indigo. So how many is for Antwerp and how many is for I never see indigo. indigo being used, that's why I said that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll do indigo for a change. We uh, did Antwerp in our last right. class, and you were there. Yeah. So, all right. So, indigo. You got to be a little careful with indigo. It is kind of like the yellow, super loaded with pigment. I mean, it's so strong. If you give it half a chance, it takes over everything. So. 
um, you know, be cautious. And so there's that, and you can almost tell, can you tell that it's just like strong? So put some more water on. There we have it. And there was one more color I kind of wanted to put in here. So let's look, look what happens now with the indigo. Can you see how it just takes over? Yes. It's a beautiful color. We're still kind of in a midnight bluey, kind of moody blue, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because we have mainly rinsed out blues. Just in case I need it, I'm going to take a neutral color, an earth tone, which I have on my palette for convenience. It's burnt shenna. It's a orangey, uh, orangey brown. So basically what it is, it's a dirty orange. Uh, you could mix it yourself by mixing uh, red and yellow together, make an orange and then put a little bit of blue in and then, you know, you would end up with something very similar to this. And so I could totally mix it, but this is on here, just faster to just take it out of the tube. And I use it a lot to tone down uh, my blues into more gray tones. Um, and I was already saying I don't want like a bright blue sky because it's not that kind of a day I'm, I'm looking to paint. Okay, so I think I'm set. Now I am going to apply water to my sky area. And so I'm gonna go with a big brush and I'm gonna get all the air bubbles out. So I kind of press the hairs down against the bottom here. So you can see all these air bubbles coming out. And then I go up against here. Just get the extra water off. Go just take the drops off there. And then I start from the top. And now I'm just into applying water. And now I can just dip in, get some more water. I want a lot of water. And see, now I don't have to be careful. Except I don't want to paint into the red house. I could have put a little line down, but I didn't. But I don't mind uh, painting over the fence. And I'm going to paint down to that little line here that indicates where the snow, uh, you know, the foreground snow is. So everything else gets wet and I don't worry about the trees, but don't paint into the red part of the barn. And then I paint down, down to here and I'll hold it up so you can see it. Right now I'm just gonna get the water applied. We are doing our first application, wet into wet, it's called in watercolor language. And this was where the top of the snow is. Goes here. And I'm not worried about painting over the fence because I am going to make my fence dark brown. It's a wooden fence. My fence is a wooden fence. And you can see my paper is curling a little bit because now I'm wetting the whole front of the paper, but the back is still dry. So that will, and especially if you're painting on 140 pound, it's gonna buckle more on you because the fibers are absorbing all that liquid and they're getting thick and, ju uh, uh, thick and juicy and take up more space. And the little skinny cousins on the back, the poor things, you know, they're still dry, so they're small. So now they're not so unhappy, we can, just spray a little water on the back and that's also going to keep our paper wet longer it's going to make our paper relax just give it a moment you do that with 300 too yeah this is 300 i'm painting on and so even 300 is buckling a little bit and you'll see more of that on, on 140 but it's you know so in your a lot of painters in the uh, previously they would stretch the paper meaning they would soak the paper yeah for about 15 minutes and then they would take this dripping wet paper out, they'll put it on a board, they would staple it down and put, you know, like gum tape around it and all sorts of things. I cannot be bothered. And then I had to wait for it to dry. And then when it dries, it, you know, uh, contracts again and then becomes like really flat. And it would take some of the buckling away. But that means pre-planning, doing it the Did you day before. The bottom? No, okay. no, no, I'm not wetting the bottom. I'm wetting just down to that oh, line right. I indicated here. That's the foreground snow, you know, I can see. Yeah. So, can you see how shiny it is? And did I miss any spots? That's you, you are the checkers for the missed spots. The, the pigment is going to run wherever I have water on. 
Eva, put it down because I did see from here a spot that you. I thought there was one in the trees, but I didn't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, there might be, and I think I saw one. I I think I took it away, but maybe oh. I didn't. Uh, and um, I usually will have to, especially it's so dry here right now, right? <laughs> I mean, uh, so we have to be extra meticulous with our water application if we don't want things to dry out before we are ready to paint on it. And the pigment, you will see it, the pigment's gonna go wherever there's water and it's gonna stop where it hits something dry. And that's why, you know, I can control where the, where the pigment goes because it's gonna stop where there's dry. Um, and now I'm gonna put some color on and I'm just gonna start with the uh, cobalt blue and I'm gonna say just with one little corner here, doops, I'm gonna say hello to the burnt sienna and I'm gonna put it in here. So like that, doop, just a little bit because burnt sienna has more power than cobalt. Did you see how it goes gray, grayer now? It's still blue because I don't wanna paint smog, uh, but I don't want like a bright blue. And then I just put the color on and like this, down to here. And I don't want my sky, I don't want it too dark, but I don't want it too light either because, you know, I want the white of the snow to show up against the sky. And now you can see, I'm just using a big brush. Don't want to fiddle around with little brushes for big areas. And then let's put some more on. And now that I have pigment on, it's easier for me to see how wet things are and where, where I'm at. Get that around here. And again, I don't worry about painting over the tree trunks here or over the fence because they're all gonna be darker. So it's, you know, I don't have to, and that's why I didn't bother ma masking that out. Only the stuff that's gonna be lighter. All right, so, there's a, and if you get a little hair, if you can take it out like that, great. And if you can't, just leave it. Don't try to fish things out once, especially when things are drying, because then you start making marks. And there's another little weird thing. Don't know what that is, there, off. Uh, now I'm going to go in, I'm going to get a little bit, just a little bit of the uh, French ultramarine blue on and just a corner into the red maybe. So then I get a little bit like a purpley color and I'm going to put that up on here. And I, I, I don't want everything to be like even, it's not like I'm not painting a wall, you know, I want it to be a little mm. interesting. Mm. And uh, I think I can live with that for right now. And I like to have my skies, skies dark up here and it gets lighter as you go down to the horizon. That's, you know, you get uh, some volume in there. And I clean out my brush and then I'm gonna go with my salt right here. So I have coarse, has a C on it and I have fine. Doesn't matter, they give different textures. And I'm just gonna sprinkle in a little bit now while it's wet. And then I'm gonna take a little time to just wipe down my board. See, you've got all that water on. And um, I'm just waiting for things to just dry a little tiny bit. Put that back on again so I don't knock it over. And you can borrow my salt. And you can't see anything yet. You'll see what happens later. And now I'm gonna go in probably using my dagger brush. And now I want much, much uh, thicker pigment. I don't want it nearly as watery as I had it before. And I'm not gonna use the cobalt. I'm gonna use French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna put a little bit of the indigo in. So I can hold that here, so push that back here so we can see it in the camera too. All right, so I'm gonna take some French ultramarine blue, might even take some more right from here. And you can see now it's not, can you see it's thicker pigment, not so much water, it doesn't flow out as much. And when I do like this, it's, you know, that I can kind of test it. Put a little bit of this here in. I like those two mixed together. And then I'm gonna go in and take, oops, just hello, hello to the uh, burnt sienna. Can you see it pushes it a little bit towards the green? Mm -hmm. But I don't want like a bright green because to me that's not what evergreens that are far away look like. Look out, does that look bright green to you? Nope, not really. All right, so there's one mixture. Say it again, what's in there? 
please. Uh, French ultramarine blue, indigo, and burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. And then I'm not even bothering rinsing out my brush. I'm going to make myself another mixture over here with the indigo. And I'm going to put a little bit of the burnt sienna in. Might even put a little bit more in there. So that's going to be a slightly different tone. And then if I just mix this, can you see how now I actually got myself three different kinds of dark greens with the three colors, mm -hmm. but they're mixed a little bit differently. So here's just burnt sienna and uh, indigo. Here's indigo, burnt sienna, and a tiny bit of the cobalt, uh, French ultramarine. Here's French ultramarine blue and indigo and a tiny bit of the burnt sienna. All right, I, I just like to have variety. And now I'm just going to go in and can you see how I'm using my brush like that? And see how, I'm, I'm just testing and seeing how much, if it's really, really wet still, it's gonna spread too much. So I'm just testing, but I kind of like what I'm seeing. And I'm doing it like this. I, I'm thinking evergreens in my head. I'm thinking evergreens. So I want to get those kind of shapes that say evergreens. And so if I do a line like this, and then a little bit of the branches, and then I have the water there, it's going to help me. So I'm going to put a little bit down here and see how that's a different color. Isn't that lovely? I like it. And see, I like to have different colors. Not all the same. Let's try this one. Because that's exactly how it is. And that way the, the, the pigment is doing the work for me and I'm not too worried about the salt. I'm gonna get a little bit of the salt in, but that's fine. And I'm just very quickly dabbing across and I'm looking at the shapes that are happening here. Now, if it was too wet, I would go out and I would wait a little bit. But I, I hit it, I think, at a pretty good time let's go in here and i'm just dabbing in and all i'm interested in painting here is the silhouettes and so don't paint individual trees now when it's wet you really can't so that's a good thing but you know when you see it, you don't see individual trees you just see these silhouettes if you look out there and because there's trees behind trees and you can't see what branch belongs to what tree if you do that it doesn't look right and um, and we want it to look right so I'm gonna put it a little bit. And you know, I'm just dabbling around and just all I'm thinking about is I want the edges, the silhouettes to look like evergreens. All what happens inside, that's irrelevant. And here, I think I'm just gonna go and I can see it's already drying on me here. Mm -hmm. So I wanna be careful. I don't wanna get into the red part. And I gotta get a move on here. Now what you can do, if things are drying a little too fast on you, you can take your mister bottle and just mist in a little bit. And you can see I held my hand, hand over. Um, so I better get this here connected. And I'm just gonna go up here and just like that. A little bit down there and a little bit here and it's gonna stop here. And there you have it. And then I can go in and then dab in a little bit more of the dark here and there. And see, as long as I do it this way, it's gonna look evergreenish. And again, I'm not so worried about the fence because that's gonna be darker. And let's get some of this in here. There. I like what I'm seeing. If I like what I'm seeing, I should move on. And uh, I want to get and see. You can see how it dries much faster around the dry area. So that's why I'm you know, better get get going. And I want to get a little bit like that. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And around there. And now here. If I can, I'm going to try and paint around. And before it dries on me too much, I want to throw in a little bit of salt. This is the coarser salt, so let's throw some in here. Maybe I can create some bushes or something by doing that there. And let's move on. And on the other side here. And now I want to 
get a little bit more water on, a little bit up like that. And just down here. And here it can be. And a little bit on the other side. And a little bit bluer there. And I want a little bit more water in here. So if it's getting too dry, you can always put a little bit more water in. And now I'm just going to dabble around here. And I want to just soften this edge down here. Don't want to be too specific. And I need one more little there. And a little there. I'm just looking at what's happening. And now I want a little bit of that green oil. Let's put a little of that green oil in here. And can you see here how it's drier and drier and drier? It's not much is happening. I'll just give it a little, little whiff there. A little bit more here. When you say you put green on, which green? Well, this, this, you know, one of my puddles that I knew was greener, like this one was oh, greener. Yeah. So I'm using the puddles I have. And then this can go out here and just make sure these look evergreenish and a little bit down here. I want it. Oops, now I went in my clean water. That always happens sooner or later, that happens. And I want a little bit of that darker color, but not too dark to kind of depict where I have, you know, that uh, snowbank in front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I kind of like it if I have a couple of these little white areas in between. I think that can look kind of mm -hmm. nice. It's a little, um, little sky holes or whatever, ground holes, I guess, when it's there. Couple more up here. And you, I always try to be very careful that I don't have everything, you know, this is not a Christmas tree plantation. <laughs> where all the trees were planted at the same time, right? It's nature, <laughs> random, which is the hardest thing. You should think, right, that that would be easy. It's not. That's the hardest thing. We get things too regular. It doesn't look right then. All right, let's get some more salt in here. I would love to have a little action where maybe the salt will... So the salt makes these patterns, if we get it on at the right time. We'll see. Uh, if what I get a little this? texture there... Yeah, what would happen if you spray a little and water? And I can try to spray, if you spray a little water in when it's beginning to dry, but yeah. you've got to be careful it doesn't go away. You don't want it. So hold your hand. It can make some little marks. Time will tell how this is going to work out. But I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with what I have here. You didn't use any red in that one, did you? I did not end up putting any red in. I just used the, um, I just used the um, burnt shenna. And I just have one place here I can see I need to fix it a little bit. There. That's good. And I can see I'm getting some action there. I'm good with that. Maybe if I could get a little action in here. Whoops, not to that one. <coughs> there. And there was one other thing I could do. If I can find my brushes, that is. Where's my... Can you see my brushes? Yeah, yeah, there they are. Yeah, you're welcome to uh, take pictures at any stage in my demos, you know, because as we you know, we'll always say, you just tell a thousand words if you need a little reminder. And what I'm going to do now is, um, if I can lift out with a damp brush right underneath there, little bit where the fence is showing out underneath the snow would be good. And if I can't, it's not a big deal, but I think I can. So I just used a barely damp brush to just lift out that color a little bit. And the same here, a damp brush, and I'm just dragging it while the, the paint is still a little damp so I can kind of remove it. And not with a wet brush, just damp. Can you see how I'm just lifting out a little bit of the color right underneath here? I lifted it into there, that's fine. Okay, that's as far as I can go, but see, we got 
two thirds of the painting painted. <laughs> 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 Can you go over those three puddles of green again? Yes, I most certainly can. So, um, we have a little snowbank here, and then we have this snowbank that's kind of hiding the bottoms of whatever's going on on the other side of the fence in the barn. So we just want to divide those, and of course, since we're trying to paint snow, we want it basically white. But if we let it, left it just white like this, well, it's completely flat, and it doesn't say snow, really. So we actually need to put a little bit of color on in order for it to say snow. And so we are going to create a snow shadow color, and that we can do very easily. I'm just gonna clean up a little bit here. We're gonna use our quinacridone red and we're gonna use cobalt blue. Now I used up my cobalt blue, so I need to clean this area. This is the very easiest way of cleaning a palette. Just spray it a little bit with a spray bottle. Grab, you know, some uh, tissue. I like to use just, you know, uh, Kleenex or for this kind of stuff. And voila, have a clean area. And I, my cobalt is still wet enough in here. So I want a little tiny bit of cobalt, you know, and I want it quite watered down because, you know, I still want it to say snow, so I don't want to do it dark, but I need a little color on the areas of the snow that's away from the light. And so I don't want this color, it's too bright, but I want a little bit of the uh, quinacridone red in make it a little purpley, maybe a little bit more. You gotta be very careful with the red, that might even have been too much. Eh, I don't know. Let me take a look. Yeah, it's a little too much. It, it takes hardly any red to turn the cobalt blue, which kind of, Mr. Cobalt is a wimp, let's put it that way. <laughs> He's a wimp. And if I think this is too purpley for me, I, I, I don't feel that that's really the right color. Um, I need it a little bit grayer. I would take a tiny, tiny bit. And you can see I only go into here with clean brushes. I cleaned up my brush. I wouldn't go into my original color wells with a dirty brush because then what happens is we get everything muddy. So I put a little tiny bit of the burnt shin on. Can you see how that already graded down a little bit? Even though it's very little. This is, I think, a little bit more like what I'm looking for, but I want it very watered down. So there, that's better. See how watery it is? It's just colored water, really. Um, and so the way I'm gonna do this, so first of all, I should probably decide where my where my light is coming from. Obviously, this is not a bright, sunny day mm -hmm. because, you know, it's kind of snowy and I made my uh, sky a little gray. So I'm, I usually need to put a little arrow on the top where my light source is from. So even though, I mean, it's not a bright, sunny day, but the light would still come from some direction. So I chose this direction. That means that this side of the barn will be very dark. <coughs> uh, this will be a little bit lighter and I can't see the other one. But that also means that it hits the trees here so then later I, it get, I get a chance to cast mm. shadows this way. Excellent. You should think <laughs> I thought about this, huh? Yeah. All right, so I'm probably going to get a little bit of a bigger brush and I'm going to start with putting a little bit of water <coughs> right on top of <coughs> that line, that faint line where I indicated that there's another snowbank. Um, and I can just go over the trees, doesn't matter. So I'm putting a little bit of water in. That's just, that's my insurance against hard lines because I don't want to stripe across. I want it to be darkest right behind that front little um, snowbank. And it will be darkest right down there because you know that goes down and in and away from the light. Uh, and then I want it gradually to go back to the white. So that's why I'm putting that little bit of water in there. I could go all the way up to the edge, but I'm not going to. But I'm gonna have it on standby a damp brush on standby, clean and damp. And then I'm gonna go in and put a little bit of this color on. And you can see I kind of skip there. 
And then let's go in with this clean brush and just kind of spread it around. And what I'm painting here is basically the top of the snowbank in front. And you know, I'll just paint over the trees here because they're gonna be dark, it's gonna be easier. And now I have a bunch of pigment on my brush because I spread that around. So I need to take that pigment off, clean it, dab it, and then with a damp brush, not wet, I go in and I make sure that I don't have like a ghost line or anything like that. Don't want any lines, everything just soft, transitioning. And can you see because I put it on, not like in one unbroken line, I'm getting some little darker areas, which is kind of nice because that says that maybe there's a little more of a dip there. And that's exactly how snow is. And can you see now I already painted that snowbank and I separated the two. And now I can go down at the bottom here and maybe I should just do myself a favor and put a little bit of water on here. Bottom, I got a little blue on there. I'm not gonna worry about it. And I'm gonna go back into that same color and I'm gonna put this a little bit darker, especially down here in the corners. I like it to be a little darker. I don't want it to fall out of my painting. I feel that if you have a little bit of darkness at the bottom, it kind of helps push you visually into the painting again. And uh, if hopefully this is not gonna dry as a hard line. And now I'm just gonna do the same thing with a damp brush, just spread it around. And now I'm gonna rinse out my brush again, because now I have pigment on it. And I would like the top to actually look white. And I better be careful that I don't touch that previous one because it's not dry yet. There, I think this is good. And it could be a little darker down here, actually, away from the light. And since I have a thumbprint right there. But can you see how now already, instead of looking like a flat white piece, it actually looks like two snow banks. Mm -hmm. So that's the next very easy step. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Hmm. <laughs> and now, right. you know, now we got all the background in, and now we come to all the fun little details, the red barn, and uh, those trees, and maybe put some little bushes, and whatever else we can come up with. All right, so everything is dry, and now I got my nice little snow banks, I like them. And let's see if I can get some of the, I always like to get some of the pencil lines to go away. You don't have to. It's just my own little obsession that I have. Um, yeah. Some, I mean, if we once we have had water over our pencil lines, they don't disappear as easily, but it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, some painters really like to see them. I think it would be kind of nice if we got at least like a little bit of red on the barn. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Can I borrow my dagger brush? from one of you, just because it's such a good brush to uh, no. to uh, use for this. No. Yeah. Thanks. It's okay, I, I got one here. I'm borrowing uh, Kathy's. Uh, so, uh, I already have the red out that I'm gonna use for the barn, which the base color of the barn is gonna be this um, uh, quinacridone red. And I can just see, I had the hardest time with this particular door. I've got all sorts of lines going. So if I can get some of them out without taking the masking fluid out, that's gonna be the thing. Yeah, there, good enough. Um, so we already discussed that this part of the barn would be darker and this corner of the barn, I think would be a little bit lighter, right? Because it's kind of on the corner and there's, there's no sunlight. There's no sun, there is sunlight, but there's no sun, but kind of hit there. So, in the first go around, we can actually just paint it a base red color, and then we can go in later and darken areas, you know? So um, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water on, and I've already, and I'm again, I'm not gonna be worrying too much about um, the fence, because it's gonna be a lot darker, and if I need to lift a little something out, I'll do it. And so I'm putting a little clean water over the whole area of the barn. And I can do that because you know, I already masked out everything that was gonna be white or light. So I don't have to worry about it. So here, put a little bit of water on. 
And then I'm gonna show you a little trick. I also happen to have a little bit of that clean, beautiful, glorious, brilliant, <laughs> transparent yellow. Mm -hmm. Or it could be nickel azo yellow from M. Graham. And I'm gonna put a little tiny bit on the tip of my brush and I'm gonna give this edge of my barn a little yellow underpainting, just this area. And I'll just let that sit for just a moment. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get some of my red paint on my brush. And I'm doing it quite watery, because remember, I'm basically painting the lightest red right now on the barn. And so dab, dab. And now I can start over here. That's gonna be the darkest part of my barn later on. Because that's in complete shadow side and I'm just making sure, yeah, it shows up. I don't want to get those little comments on my YouTube channel. It would be nice <laughs> if, if you would, it would be nice if you would paint inside so I can see what you're doing and not outside the camera angle. <laughs> I know. You to ignore those people. <laughs> no, it is true. I do the best I can. But you know, when, I, when you're painting and I'm teaching, my main focus is on teaching you guys and on my painting, obviously. So sometimes, you know, I get carried away and I don't really see. And I just want to make sure that it doesn't go further down than my snowbank here. So there's that and a little bit more. I can actually load it up a little bit here on this side because it's going to be darker. We know that already. And then I think I can, let's go in over this. Can you see how by having a little bit of that yellow underneath, doesn't it glow a little bit more? Uh -huh. it sure does. So here, the magic yellow, the magic <laughs> yellow. That's a little, I painted a little sunshine on our barn. So there we go. And again, I'm not going to worry about the fence because it's going to be darker. And my fence, I know in the picture it was kind of a turquoise color, but because I have all that blue going on, I don't want turquoise on the fence. I want it brown. Good old wooden fence. And there you have it, folks. How fun and easy was that? So now we already have at least like the base color on the barn, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. I think that's as far as we're gonna to get today. So that's as far as we got. What we're gonna do now is we are going to, um, we're going to paint uh, in our barn. Um, and we, we're just gonna give it a little bit more color and a little shadow here and there uh, before we do anything else. And I already have my quinacridone red out. So I'm gonna give it a little bit for whiff and here it is and here's a little bit of the transparent yellow and I'm probably going to use a little bit you can either use a blue if you want to or I'm going to use um, my permanent magenta which is my color that I like to use to wear uh, dark and reds but if you don't have that you can certainly use one of your blues like the French uh, ultramarine blue would be a good one um, and here I have another little puddle of connect on red so I can already mix there so that's a little bit redder and now this is not you know for an architect you know it's not the architects you know work drawing or anything like that <coughs> uh, so we don't want to get like too hung up on things but let's just get a little bit more color in um, on this side because we know that one's going to be darker, right? So we can just paint that in. And I can paint over my masking. That's why we masked out. And I can paint over my fence. I'm not worried about my fence because it's going to be darker. I think I might have rubbed a little bit of my masking fluid off here. Doesn't matter. Anytime something is going to be darker, we don't have to worry about masking it out. It's only if its areas are going to be lighter. We have to be careful. So there's that. And now I can go in, not even gonna rinse out my brush. Maybe I'll dip into this that's been modified with a little bit of the Conacodone Red. That was, and then I'm gonna put some of that underneath the eaves here, right? And I can put a little bit on the other side too. And I'm doing it while it's still uh, damp, so it's gonna flow out a little bit, but I'm fine with that. 
and I'm putting a little bit underneath there um, because that's also going to be a little bit darker and then I'm just going to, I rinsed out my brush and I'm just going to pull it down like there. But you can see that already gives the barn a little bit more character. There's that. Uh, and I can also paint inside. I'm going to take a little bit of my Conacodone Red and a little bit of that um, magenta. And I can also go in and then I'm going to, and I'm doing it on dry. I'm going to paint in underneath that overhang because it's going to be a lot darker in there because you know the light is not going to get in there and i'm leaving can you see i'm leaving a little space for the trim so i can leave that like a lighter red and again i don't worry about the fence and then here just get that in and then be careful here on top of it. So the snow bank is kind of obscuring the bottom of it. There. Can you see how that already kind of gives the, <coughs> the, um, the barn a little bit more character? And I can also use a little bit of that same color Mm, no, I'm going to wait. I was going to say underneath here, but I still, I, this is too light for me. I don't like it that, that color, so I'm going to have to wait. But um, I can, no, I'm also going to wait with that. Never mind. Um, I think I'm going to uh, let this dry, and then we'll, we'll go in and do the details on the barn, <laughs> because then I can put that window in after I've, you know, covered, uh, colored over here again, and then I can put some more darks on here really get the cast shadows and stuff. So we'll just start with that. Um, so you can go down and do this part of it, and then uh, it won't take very long, then we'll be back up again. <laughs> so mine's dry, and I noticed I have been a little sloppy right there. It's, can you see it's like crooked? Not too keen on that. So I'm just going to take a little bit of a, I have a flat brush. So I'm just going to kind of straighten up this line because, you know, I'm not trying to uh, paint a barn that's uh, ready to fall down. So mm -hmm. even though normally that's what we paint. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, we don't paint nice new barns. This is a fairly nice new barn, but it's nice and red. So now I've got a little red in the snow. Oh, well, not going to worry about it. Okay. So, um, I don't like my, this is too pink for, for my barn. So I'm just going to go in and I can do that just on dry. And you know, I think I might just use this here. Like there's a little corner post or something like that here. So I'll leave that a little lighter, but I would like to have my barn a little bit darker here. That would be a good idea because that, you know, I'm, I'm, thinking about that I want to, you know, make the snow look really prominent. And that's only going to happen if I have something a little bit darker, you know, next to it, not super pale. So here, and again, I don't worry about, I don't worry about um, painting over the fence or anything like that, all the stuff that's darker, of course that is gonna get covered up anyway. So here on top of the snow, see the, that snow bank is going to, uh, you know, that kind of obscures whatever is beneath. All right, so, so far so good. And um, now we want to get a little bit of texture on this barn. So I'm going to go and um, make myself a shadow color. So I might take, I have um, I have some indigo here. Let me see if I put a little bit of that indigo in here. Mm. Maybe that's a little pur more purple than I want. Let's get some more red in. There, I kind of think I like that. 
magenta. And yeah, the permanent red. magenta. And there was and a quinacridone red. red, yeah. So I just want, you know, a cooler, darker. Because now I want to go in and I want to put that really dark cast shadow on inside here, on the inside of that uh, roof line. And a little bit on the other side, not as much. There. And then let's try and see if I can make my brush really dry because now I would like to get a little bit of dry brushing in. So that means that we want to have thick pigment, not very much water. So can you see how this is like so th thick, won't really even, it doesn't run, it just stays there. Of course, I barely have any water on my brush. And for this, I'm using my dagger brush. I think that's gonna do the best job for me. Um, and then I want to see if I can drag down yeah, a little bit of dry brushing, you know, so I get a little texture on the barn here. Turn it the other way. And I'd like to have some little darkness right behind there. And a little bit more. Can you see how that gives it a little texture? Mm -hmm. And makes it hopefully look like it's wood, which it is. And then emphasize this line here and then drag it down again. I'm just trying to get a little texture on this barn so it's not so smooth looking because that wouldn't really be. And I also want to put some texture on up here. Now it's dry enough, I can do it. And I try to do it kind of around the door. I think I want to leave the door or whatever it is, hay loft, it, it, whatever it is. It's where they throw the hay up <laughs> in the summer. All right. And we can take a little bit more of our Conactone Red put out here and again lots of pigment not so much um, not so much water so put some more of the quinacridone red out here so I have it more red not so blue and let's see dab dab make sure my brush is still very dry and again I'm gonna try and see if I can pick up on that thing here I think there's a little there and I want to get a little bit of those markings on the barn on the side here too. So that's called dry brushing. <coughs> you see? Mm -hmm. And <coughs> a little bit more here on this side. I just want to get some little markings on here so that it looks like wood mm -hmm. and what else can I do so then I have I don't know if you have that but here that's I can actually see up underneath the eaves I think it's called here so that'll be even darker up there you see that mm -hmm. and I also want to get a little bit more of that darkness in here in kind of a scribbly manner. Just trying to get a little texture on it so it doesn't look so like freshly painted or whatever. And again, I skip the door. There we have it. All right. And then a little bit of water on, a little bit of water on. And now we make a little bit of a darker color. Again, I'm over here. Put a little bit more of that permanent magenta in and have a nice sharp edge on my brush. And then I want to get, you know, that cast shadow that's underneath the eave, eaves of the um, barn. Of course, they're gonna cast a shadow like that, right? And all this is gonna help bring the barn to, li to life and make it more interesting.
I took it a little bit down there, a little bit down there. Just doctoring this up a little bit more. I think I want to get a little bit wetter here. And a little bit. If I don't like it, which I didn't like that one, dab it off right away. And so I'm just trying to get a little bit of an interesting texture on here. And I think these bonds, they have like the... Swaps. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right, I kind of like that. What do you think, guys? Mm -hmm. Does it look okay from where you are sitting? Mm -hmm. I, you know how it is when you're sitting right there, you can't really see much. Mm -hmm. But I think that looks pretty okay. Now we can... We should probably paint our... We should probably paint our trees. Let's do that. So, I might want to get a liner brush, wigger brush, whatever. One of these tall, skin, uh, skinny, long-haired ones. Want to get into the branches a little bit. And so the color I'm going to use for my tree trunks, these are deciduous trees. I'm going to use my good old trunk color which is French ultramarine blue. I have some here, but it's too watered down. So I need to go in and make myself another puddle here that's thicker. Can you see that? More pigment, not so much water. So I have some of that. Rinse that out. And then I'm gonna use some of my burnt shenna, and I have some there. But again, I think I have too much water in it, so. Let's see if we can doctor up a really nice thick one, especially if I grab that droplet there. So now I'm after dark, and if I'm after something a dark color, you know, if I have too much water in, it's, it's gonna dry pale, and then I have to do it again. So I'm not really keen on that. So uh, less water, more pigment is gonna give us the darks we want. And, I'm gonna go back to my dagger brush. And um, I'm gonna start with this one. And I'm gonna put a little bit of water inside the trunk, kind of down the middle of the trunk. My light source is coming from here. That means that the light is gonna hit my trunk on this side. So I'm gonna start with my burnt shenna. And can you see how it's running in where it's hitting the water? And then here, this is like the only time where I paint a tree trunk where it has a hard edge at the bottom because it's covered up by snow. Otherwise, I would have a soft edge and let it kind of go into the ground. Um, but when we are painting a snow scene, you know how the snow kind of like lies up a, a, along the trunks and it'll give us a hard a hard edge and i'm going to dab in a little bit more and now i'm not going to even tr um, rinse out the tip of my brush i'm going to stick it into that um, more pigmented french ultramarine blue and i'm going to go down the shadow side of the tree and those two, are, can you see how they're kind of blending? Uh -huh. And creating some nice tree trunk color. And I can put a little bit more blue in where I want it darker. And if it goes too blue on you, don't panic. Just put some more um, of the uh, burnt shenna in and that'll take care of it. And I'm, you know, it's, I'm just going up to there and I'll have to deal with that later. Let's get a little bit more of the burnt shenna in. And see, it gives it a nice variety when you do it like that and let it mix on the paper. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, you don't have to go back and do a whole lot of stuff to make it look right. And back, darken it a little bit, especially down here, the bottom. And can you see how that, then it automatically make it, makes it look like the sun's hitting that mm -hmm. one side or, I mean, there's no sun, because, but mm -hmm. that light, the light, I should say, the light, mm -hmm. not the sun. All right, 
and then you know it's disappearing up here it's running you know it's on this side so we can see the the branches so i just start with the tip here and lots of pigment and just kind of put in some branches i didn't bother drawing most of them because i knew they were going to disappear behind my trees here and those i'm just going to build them out as a little at a time. You don't have to finish the whole thing now. Um, I think there's going to be one. I think I had one plan that was going to go across here. But you know, I can't really do that until I remove the masking fluid, but I can at least start it. So I'm just, when I paint these kinds of branches and stuff, I usually just kind of get them started I don't try to do the whole thing in one go because I want to make sure that it looks natural. And um, sometimes I have to kind of wait and see where it would be good to have a branch. So I'm just see here. And it'll be totally how it is in real life that is, where it's going over the dark areas of the forest. You can't really see that precisely, but that's how it is. Um, and and uh, let's see here, maybe another little one there. And then, and you also have to remember that branches, you know, they're not as fat as the trunk they're sitting on. And mm -hmm. the side branches are not as fat as the branch they come out from. So they get skinnier, skinnier, skinnier. And they also taper, get a little skinnier as they go up. Um, I think this is as far as I wanna do right now. Have a pretty good beginning. And this we can always doctor up later. That's a lot of fun to do that when we kind of can see more accurately. So there'll often be a little bit of, so don't start out with your branches too fat. I can just give you that tip because a lot of times we end up having to fatten them up a little bit. So don't start too fat. It's easier to make a skinny branch wider, it's impossible to make it skinnier. Then you have to make the other branch stick. And you know, so we don't want to end up with like super fat trees. <laughs> so you, you, you kind of know how trees are, right? I mean, they do taper <laughs> up a little bit. So anyway, so that's the, that's the story on trees. Uh, so we're gonna do those. So I'm just, I just showed you this one and then um, you can paint both of them are the same. And then the next thing I might as well show you now, is, because it's gonna be with the same color. I know in our um, reference photo, I think the fence is kind of turquoisey, but I don't want that. I want, because I have so much blue and green going on, I need all the warmth I can muster up. It's mainly a cool painting, but you know, you want to have some warmth to, uh, to uh, balance it out. So I'm just going to paint the fence underneath where I masked out for the snow. And again, the fence will be a little bit darker, but I do this with the same colors, the French ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna because they, you know, and I mix them not in one to one dark, but I mix them on the paper with my brush, just kind of dip back and forth. That way I get a little variety and I think it makes it more interesting and so. Now that's gonna go behind this tree. So I'm just gonna paint to here, but just so you can see, that disappears behind that tree. And then the same down here. And there's not as much snow on the bottom one because most of the snow fell on the top one. And so I often like to make the bottom one a little bit browner at the top, like a little bit more burnt sienna at the top and then darker at the bottom with the French ultramarine blue, just to give it a little life. And as long as I just let them mix and mingle, we're good. I think that makes it, see then, I think it looks like wood then. Mm -hmm. You're doing it all on with dry paper, not wet paper, right? Yeah, I'm doing that on, on so the trunks, I gave it water in the middle because you know, they're a little bit fatter and I want the colors to mix. And the only way they're gonna mix is if you give them water to dance in. It's like a dance floor. And then here, those are so skinny and it's easier to control 
you know, and just have a lot of pigment on your brush. It's easier to control if you just go little by little along here. So that's the next step. Tree trunks, and then we can paint the fence. So I went ahead and finished, I didn't finish, but you know, I did the trunk number two and started some of the branches. I'm gonna deal with the branches, as I said, once I have the mask included, because some of them are gonna go over the roof and stuff. The more you can have things overlap, the better. The more you are saying that there's depth in there, that's part of perspective, is overlapping. Um, so I'm almost ready to take off my masking, but I have one little task that I still need to do, and that is getting those little um, poles or what are they? Posts, thank you, posts, uh, fence posts, fence posts painted in. Um, so um, they are gonna be, again, a little bit darker. So I'm using the same colors, French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I have one here. And they're on the opposite side of the fence. So I can only see part of it, okay? So like here. And I like to make them a little bit darker if I can. Of course, they're gonna be kind of shaded. The blue makes it darker. The blue makes it darker when you mix it with the burnt sienna and not not very much water that's the key and now they need to go don't stop them right there on the top of the white snowbank because they they come a little bit closer to us so like here can you see that that way i'm bringing it closer like that right so that's where they're at nice and dark and so there was one there, and I can't remember where I put them. I can't see my lines anymore. So luckily, this is not for the fence builder, so I can put them wherever I like. Um, so I think there's one here. At least now there is. I like to have something dark, dark here over the red barn. And again, they stop down here somewhere closer to me. The fence is, you know, closer to me than the barn is. So obviously their posts will go down further. And I actually think I want to bring it a little bit further than that. So the more I pull them down, the closer it's coming to me. So here's about right. And darken it a little bit. There's that. Where else can I put one? So there's one over here. And it doesn't matter. You can put them wherever you need them. If you have some place maybe where, you know, you have a boo-boo, you need to cover, well, fence post could come to the, your assistance. And it's the same as with the trees. Normally, I would say, let them kind of softly disappear into the ground. But since they're covered, you know, the snow on the ground, there will be a hard edge. And there, there will also be a little bit of a... A hard edge? A, there will be a hard edge because the snow... Well, I thought it was you know, there's stops. You know, I mean, the snow is it's white. Right it's up against the post. So, um, so that's why that's the case. And I have three. Eh, I think I'm good with that. Do I need any more? Not really. I'm just going to have those three. And you can have as many or as few as you want. I'm just going to go with those three. I, I, I can live with that. And later on, we're going to put a little shadow and stuff. Then they can cast a shadow and we can do all sorts of fun things. So they don't look so stuck on. And it's the same with the trees. They'll cast a shadow. But we'll, that'll be later. All right. So I think we're at the point. So I'm just going to let that dry. Boy, I can start taking off my masking fluid. Now we take off masking fluid 
I mean, you can rub it off with your fingers. I find that not so great. And you can use a rubber cement eraser. I, this is like a half one, I've cut it. And this is a new one, I've treated myself to a new one. And so I had a little bit of masking fluid up here. I can't really see where it's at because, you know, with all the painting over it and stuff, kind of blends in. Now you never ever want to pick up masking fluid if there's wet paint around. So that's why I don't want to do it down here just yet because if you do it over wet paint, you're gonna smear the paint. I see here, and I overmasked my barn, but it doesn't matter. And see, I have noticed the last few times, and I don't know what it is, if it's a masking fluid or if it's the paper. Now that I heard that there's something about arches being a, you know, having been sold or whatever. I don't know what the whole story is. I'll dig into it. But can you see how I have a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of uh, blue. I've, that's never happened to me before with the PBO. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed it over the last maybe year. Not always, but sometimes. And I'm not quite sure, of course, now I can't remember which one I used. If I use this one here, can you see these two? Yeah, now I ripped it, but you can probably see. Yeah, one uh, has uh, this blue thing on it, right? Has a different label on it. Mm -hmm. It's the same, other than that, it's the same. Mm -hmm. This one I got from England. Mm -hmm. This one I got regular from the United States of America. Um, and I don't know because I haven't paid enough attention, but I'm kind of wondering if it was the British one that's something up, up with that. I don't know. But anyway, I'll just live with it. I find well, even in the bottle, it's a little too. different, almost in color, just slight. Uh, yeah, it's like it's a little bit it bluer. Come off as well. And that's I don't right. know right. what the deal is, is with this whole thing. I mean, that. I've never had the problem before with this one. I've had it with those Molotov uh, masking pens that are kind of uh, like markers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. I have seen so terrible, then. terrible things with. Yeah. They don't. Do that. They don't. They don't. They they stain, which you know is really a bummer. Okay, so I think I can take it off here, and you can see how it just comes off. And can you see how that already changes your perception of the painting? Um, now, the thing about masking fluid, I think I uh, alerted to it earlier um, last time. I mean, there is a little bit of a, pr a price to pay when you're putting masking fluid on, using masking fluid. I mean, it makes it nice and easy to paint the background and all the stuff. You don't have to be careful with anything. However, you're stuck with hard edges everywhere. And it's very prominent because you know all of a sudden that white paper stands out like a sore thumb. So it's very good and that's why I also said to you, don't be too sloppy with this because that's gonna create a lot of work for you later on um, if you have it on sloppily. And it's not that easy to, you know, I mean, I, you know, it's very difficult to be very precise with it, I find, no matter what tool you use. But it's, it's a good idea to take as much care as possible. So there, I think I have it all off. I'm just trying to feel my hand. I can feel it anywhere. No, I think it's off. All righty. So, of course, yours truly, even though she tried not to be sloppy, she also has some little boo-boos. Here Can't and it there. Just be slippy snow? It could be slippy snow, but <laughs> some of them are not going to really look much like slippy snow. Um, so, like here, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not so bad. I mean, you know, so there's a little fixing to be done here and there. Just clean up the line. See, that's, you know, so however yeah. yours turned out, there'll be some cleanup that we need to do. And in here. So that's nothing. I mean, that's, you know, all depends on how yours turned out. And 
the hardest was this one here. And there's also, aren't you happy? There's also so such a thing as a white gel pen. Don't tell Transparent Watercolor Society that I said that. But you know, sometimes if we need to fix something, yeah. there's also such a thing as white paint. I, I like to use this part, this type here um, from Creative Mark Aqua Cover, it's called, and it's liquid watercolor paper, they call it. Uh, and this is designed to cover Arches Bright White, which happens to be the paper I paint on. Mm -hmm. So it has, the, it, it's the same color. What's you know how, again? Aqua Cover? Aqua Cover. And, and you can see it, take you a picture. Use your brush that, that's you can pr use your brush and it's, it, it, it is, mm -hmm. it, I, that's, you know, I use it kind of towards the end if I, if I have something that where I really, really need it. Or if I just need a little bit, like on my branches, I might, I might just use my little, uh, my white gel pen, this one here, mm -hmm. Uniball, Signo, Uniball. Uh, it's Uniball. Japanese, it, those are the best. And you know, they're a couple of bucks. They don't last forever, but. So, and I'm happy to share both this and that. Now, if you end up using the white um, aqua cover, I'll give you a little drop and you put it in one of the areas in your palette and then, you know, fix whatever you need to fix. Then, you know, rinse, rinse out your brushes really well and dump your water and get clean water. Don't get it mixed in with your watercolors because it's opaque and we don't want opaque paint mixed in with our transparent watercolors. That's the only thing. So, and you can, with a gentle touch, you can paint over it. So it's meant so that you can, I mean, you know, if you have to paint over a big area, hmm, I've never tried that. But for little fixes in snow scenes, it works like a charm. Uh, so, you know, I'll have a little fixing to do, like for instance here where I just uh, took off the masking and here is the fence I have to straighten up my fence here because there was a little. So, you know, little things like that you can see here. You need to just make it straight. There. And um, then on the roof, and of course now I can't see my lines and nothing. Let me grab my other so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing here. So here's my other painting. So the snow is, it stayed up on the top part of the roof, but you know here, the bottom part, it's a Dutch style roof, I think it's called. Um, you know, it's very steep, so the slow, snow slides right off and it's, um, oh. it's an aluminum or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, so, I might just use maybe this one. And so I'm gonna grab a little bit of a snow slash roof color. And so that would be a little bit of my cobalt blue. Get a little bit over here. And then I wanna make it a little bit grayer by putting a little bit of the uh, burnt sienna in. Good old standby. So they have kind of a blue-gray. I think that'll be good for the roof. So I like to get a little bit of a line in here. So I think it's somewhere around here. A little bit more water. I don't want it too dark. I can always darken, but it's, you know, harder to make it. Yeah. And I don't... What's your line there? Yeah, great, thanks. I don't want an unbroken line necessarily. Okay, great. And then lots of water on. And then I think I'm going to drag down from here. Lots of water on. You could wet it if you wanted to. I'm feeling brave today, so I'm doing it like this. More water. And back here. And now I've got to be careful because there's this thing, right? And how does that go? It goes down. There's, you know, that's a bunch of the snow slid off the roof mm -hmm. and landed on that little thing, overhang sticking out. And so there's a, like a pile of snow on top of that thing. 
and don't want it outlined but so by even do it by putting that little bit of color on, uh, color on here keeping it very light and I'm doing it in the kind of the direction of the snow and I think here I should indicate there's a little bit of snow that kind of got stuck to the roof there it looks like so I'm putting that in just for a little variety. And let's just make sure that we have that like that. All right. Can you see how that already kind of gives it some? Uh, yeah. So with very, very light color. Made it a little bit darker there. Of course, again, the light. And I can do whatever I like. Since it's my painting, maybe I want to pick up a little bit like that. Luckily, these colors are non-staining. So, you know, if you get in trouble, you can always uh, lift it up easily. I want to maybe have a little bit more blue in. Got a little gray. You don't want it brown. I mean, you can do whatever you want, of course. But I don't like brown snow because that looks like, <laughs> you know, dirty. I don't paint dirty snow. I know it exists. Just not in my paintings, I like to say. <laughs> and then here on the roof, just to, uh, you know, and again, I'm just gonna wing it. And right away, I'm gonna put in more water. And so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to uh, create that little, you know, there's, again, the snow kind of fell off and slid off part of it, or part of it slid off here. Got a little darker than I wanted, so I'll pick it up. But can you see, then I can make those, like that's a little bit of the snow mm -hmm. that's stuck on, that's and then really here good. that fell down and is lying there, right? It's just like snow. And, uh, and then, um, so that's that. And then uh, here, just trying to see what I can see. So here on this side, this is snow, so I'm giving the snow some volume. And here, and down here a little bit, it's more gray. Of course, it's not really snow stuck to here. But can you see by putting on um, little edges like that, and I'm also gonna do it here. Where am I gonna do it here? So here, I'm also putting a little bit of that snow uh, shadow color on the edge here that gives the snow volume. You, you know, because it shows the thickness of the snow is what it does. Can you see that when I put that in? Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that's going on here, so this part of the snow gets quite a bit of, uh, of light because, you know, the light's falling on that side. And then um, up here, that's where the snow kind of tumbles down like that. And so I'm just painting in the shadow part of it. And that'll be a lighter shadow than that one that shows the thickness. There, and dab it out a little bit. Can you see how that already kind of starts giving the snow some, some, some form? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we want. And then these things here, I think they're white, but you know what? They are underneath the roof there, so you can't see much of them. So I just already put, I just dragged a little bit of color just to push it back. And um, I'll have to do the same in here. I can do it now. I just barely have any color on I and I probably need to fix, but I can still, I can do this now. And then later with the red, I can go in and straighten up where needed. But, and I don't even mind if it gets a little pinkish in there because you know it's surrounded by all this red and the white paint is gonna reflect that a little bit. And I'm just pushing it in under that roof it, so that the snow will be whiter than this. And again, I have some fixing of fences to do here. But, so I'm just dragging over a little bit just to push it back. So it's still light, we still have it. And the same here, I don't really know what that is. But 
I know that it's darker. So I'm just gonna push it back. So can you see how that just, then it pushes it underneath there, it's behind, and this snow has to be whiter than that. So even though they're both white, but this one doesn't get much light and it gets a little reflection, so I'm good with it being a little on the pink side. And the same actually on over or on this one, put a little bit of that. This one will also um, not be bright white. Of course, it's away from the light. So I'm just gonna tone it down and then later I'll go in and fix the shapes. Of course, it's mainly with red, I need to fix it. But that way, can you see it's just, then it doesn't fight with the bright snow. And um, on the fence, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and get just a tiny little bit of our shadow color, very, very, very pale. That means lots of water. I don't want it too blue. I don't want it too gray. I don't want it just right. I think this can be just right. And then if you put a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that right where the snow and the fence meets, you're also giving this snow a little volume. You can either, if you have room, depending on how much, how fat your snow is, um, you can go in with a damp brush and just kind of loosen the edge a little bit, make it soft before it dries. Can you see that? Yeah. How that gives it volume. It's very, very little, but it gives it volume. And if you can't see it because it's so tiny, you know, you can come up here. And so I'm gonna do it here also. So I do a little at a time, and then I do like to go in and see if I could just soften the edge a little bit. And then it's just white right on the top where the light hits it. And then, you know, it kind of goes away from the light. And that makes it look a lot more natural. And I have a weird white space there that I wanna take care of. And so I'm gonna do that. And see here on the little ones, there's just some little patches on the bottom one, which I think makes sense. And um, while you're up here, so you have, you know, lots of painting time. You know, those posts that we did? Let's give them a little shadow color, just like that. And again, can loose the edge a little bit. And also do it like that. Can you see that that kind of, you know, sets them into the ground? And there's all, you know, those little snow holes or whatever. I'll give it a little bit like that. And later I'll, I'll, I'll even give a very faint, but I am gonna, you know, put a little bit of a shadow color across the snow of the fence. Because the light's coming from here, that's why the post will go this way. Uh, and the trees will cast a shadow and stuff like that. Um, but I think that's plenty of information for you right now. Try and, um, and you know, what we're gonna do, I can show you what we're gonna do with the roof then later, because you know, right now it still looks like it's snow on the roof. I don't want that. So then I'm gonna go in and this time I'm gonna go in and get a little bit of my French ultramarine blue. It's a little bit of a stronger color and get some of the burnt sienna in. A little bit more gray, like that. It's a gray. That's kind of like the, I think that's a good color for the fence. Uh, oh, or not for the fence, for the roof, for the roof. And then I take the, I take the moisture out of my brush and then I cross my fingers, if I could. Um, and then I'm gonna, I turn my brush on the, on the, like, on the back side, and it's it has pigment on, but not very much water. And I'm going to try and drag it down in the direction of those um, roof plates. The ridges on the them. ridges on them, yeah. So if I can get some of that on, like that. There we go. Can you see how that can then start no. looking like the f the aluminum roof? Mm. Don't make it too uniform. That's the, that's the thing. Of course, there'll be, you know, frost stock and, you know, who knows what. I mean, if you wanted to, you could even put a little tiny bit of uh, burnt sienna on because maybe there's a little rust on it. You know? 
But see, all this is going to help push out that snow. And if it gets too prominent, just dab it up. Or make it a little wetter. Smudge it out. It's nice to have a little... Dab it out. So you can see how that can start giving some, you know, giving a little bit of texture nice. to the roof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whole thing. And, and again, don't do it. It's not too perfect. That's the, and then get it in the right direction. You know, don't do it this way. And then, and it's good, always good if you can get a little, especially underneath those snow banks. It's nice if you could get a little darkness there, that'll kind of make it a little bit more dramatic. And there. And if it gets too perfect, dab it up. But anyway, you get the picture. Mm -hmm. Go have some fun with that. Mm -hmm. I just, I put the shadow underneath the whole way across on the fence where there's snow. I did a little bit more here. Uh, and then I went in with my little tiny detail brush and I fixed little areas, straightening up these white trims, you know, where there was some imperfection. You know, and you could be as persnippity or as, you know, loose as you like to be. I guess I wanted to kind of straighten things up a little bit. So same here, made sure that the snow didn't go into the tree trunks. It's all those little details that makes it look better. Um, so, so far, and I put a tiny bit of shadow. I might go do a little bit more on those posts there. And then um, now is the time for me to go in with my wonderful um, liner brush. You know, that's that skinny brush that has long hairs, can hold quite a bit of pigment and, um, and water. Uh, and I can do some of those smaller little branches. So I'm gonna use my branch color, which is French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'll mix it over here. And I don't want it too watery. Hopefully I didn't spray in too much water. And I want them kind of dark. Those branches, as they go out and become thinner, they look more uh, silhouetted against the sky. So here was one. And let's uh, continue that one and pick up on, you know, some of those uh, little snow patches that I had masked in, uh, out. If I can get some of those in, that'd, that'd be good. And if some of them are in an area where they are not useful at all, you can get rid of them. So can you see how I'm just wiggling my brush and getting some of those little branches and I'm, I'm kind of lifting up a little bit to get them really nice and skinny. And here is something that looks weird. So if it looks weird, I get rid of it. And here, this tree is a little tiny bit in front of that tree. So, see there's a snow thing that wouldn't, doesn't make sense. And so I'm gonna go across with a branch to really make that clear to the viewer. And here it just so happens that there's another little side branch here. Like that. And trying to make the branches so that they are the way branches are, which is, and a little bit overlapping on the roof of the barn would be lovely. So I'm gonna go in, get a little bit more on here. Create a, this branch is going out here and then it's going up and maybe like, see how nice that is if we can overlap a little bit, get a little bit of the 
darker color in, make it fatter here. Of course, it is fatter first, you know, and then it gets skinnier as it, you know, goes out to the tip. So here is that, get that, here, 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 and overlap. And then I try to go really, really skinny. And uh, that's a very long branch with no side branches. That doesn't look right. So I take my time, I love painting trees. I take my time with my little trees here and I look at them and say, do you really look like a real tree or do you look weird? <laughs> and if I, I say to myself, that looks weird, I try to make it look better. And so once we get out here, see, that's what a lot of you, I went around and saw what you guys have going on. And I told several of you that you stopped, you know, kind of, Mm, too soon. You didn't get some of these lovely little twiggy things out. Can you see how that really, really adds to it? Yeah. I hope you can mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. It takes a time. It takes time. Um, so just do a little at a time. And if you get tired of do something else and then go back to it. Or, you know, hopefully now with the storms rolling in hopefully we're getting some of those lovely lovely days where there's nothing you can do outside you can just sit in your wherever you paint the studio or your dining room table or wherever you are and um, have fun with this it can seem tedious there's two ways of looking at these things depending on your temperament and what day it is i think um <laughs> You can find it tedious, or you can find it relaxing and almost meditative. So if you can get yourself in one of those moods where it's like all of a sudden it kind of, and then I love to do it uh, listening to um, either a podcast or I listen to a, you know, audible books or something like that. And I swear, you know, after the first five, 10 minutes, I'm so into doing this. I don't really, really listen, but it kind of keeps me going and keeps me company. I don't know if that makes any sense. I've, I've, I've heard from other artists that they, they actually do the same. I mean, a lot of times, some people like to, you can also, if you're into rather listen to some music, that's also wonderful. But anyway, that's, there's nothing hard about it. It's just takes time. And then of course, see here, for instance, no, that works okay. So, but I have the snow going here. That means this branch is coming from the center of the tree, the front here. So if I put a little bit of dark, more blue underneath it, I can really make you see that. Little, you know, cast a little shadow there almost. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Then that makes sense mm -hmm. that that snow is coming there. It's resting on that branch. So, you know, I do little things like that. Anytime I come, you know, have something going on, I'm like, that looks weird. Either I get rid of it or I fix it so that it actually does make some sense. And I should probably also put a little dark on top here. Like that. And then do the edge. That way it, it looks more like that branch is coming from middle of the tree talking there there can you see that now mm -hmm. so I have a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff mm -hmm. um, so you know I'm not gonna bore you with too many branches okay so you get the picture that's just basically it and then I had pre-planned I do believe I had pre-planned a little sapling that was coming out here just to balance those two, two trees off so I'm going to go in with my rigger brush first and lay down some nice water, which like that. And then I'm going to go in maybe first with my burnt shenna and run that in. And I can't see where I have it. So now I'm just going to guess. So here's my burnt shenna on this side and it gets a little fat and it comes from down here 
And then I'm not even gonna rinse out my brush. I'm gonna stick it into that mixture I had. Make it a little fatter down here and I'm just gently running it up. And maybe some of the French ultramarine blue now. Get it really nice and dark, especially here and up here. So this is even closer to me, so it can actually be a little bit taller because you know, as closer, it looks bigger. So I'd like to get, if I could get some of those little branches up into the sky. Um, so you can see that that creates a little balance, I feel, and I felt it needed that, so. So I always, you know, I, I like my having my painting so that everything is not already spelled out. You know, I have still leave myself some decisions to make once things come together and can kind of see what I feel it needs. So that's also why I don't like to have too precise a drawing because then you're kind of locked in. And then here, let's just get some of these little side branches going. Maybe some little twiggy things. This is kind of a, you know, it's a sapling. It's some nice little side branches. And exactly the same as the other one. Nothing too uh, extraordinary with that. And then, of course, it's going to help a lot. I still have a clump of snow there that is floating. Either I'll take care of it by elim el eliminating it, or maybe I still have a fat branch here. Maybe, aha. This is a picture. Yeah, but you know what? The picture doesn't really matter with yeah. that, but thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have, here, I have this fat branch that goes like this, and it could pick up on that one. And you can see, I might have to take care of a little bit of it. But can you see how, you know, I. I just, it's like a story that is slowly evolving. My little tree here, get it a little bit more. And then this one goes across like that. And pretty soon I'm gonna make that make sense. That one. And so what I wanted to show you was, so some of these branches, you know, I just did a couple of snow clumps here and there. But as I'm building my little tree, so then I decide that it might be nice if I had a little bit of snow going on somewhere else. I'm just trying to see if I can find some paper too. These uh, gel pens, they have, sometimes they kind of need to get going. So for instance, here, I could put a little bit more snow on there. How nice would that be? And can you see how I can oh, just yeah. decide mm -hmm. where would the snow stay? And here for sure, right? Is that white ink? It's white ink, it's wow. an ink pen. It's a gel pen, it's a gel pen. It's, um, you can get it a lot of different places, Amazon, Nevada Fine Arts, sometimes the office uh, supply stores have them. This is the uh, Signal, uh, Uniball Signal white gel pen. That's the best one of all the gel pens in my opinion. And other art. and see here, for instance, also how nice would it be if I could get a little bit of white snow across here where the post is in the background? Mm -hmm. That would be good. Mm -hmm. So you know, I just and here I kind of was a little lazy. I didn't put any snow on here, and now I'm kind of regretting it. So I can put on some more snow here, and see it's nice and a little bit whiter mm -hmm. than the white yeah. on the back. So that yeah. really, all those little mm -hmm. things that um, help us. And then here, I had a little oopsie. Can put you know so I can straighten out if I need to some areas that were white and can you see how how you can just nice. doctor it up with that yeah. now technically once we do that it's not a hundred percent transparent watercolor and if you know this uh, transparent watercolor society they do not accept this kind of thing but if you're uh, our local share watercolor society they have no problem with this kind of stuff 
Well, it'll be well before I submit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we're not going to, it's not going to let us. We'll call this the practice one. Yeah. So anyway, so you can see that's a lot of fun. So you're um, going to extend that up there, did you say? Or you, you I already did. did. Oh, okay, that's as far as Yeah, I, I don't think I want to go. So here's the other rule. See, I didn't take my thing on. So if, oops, um, if um, this is fine, stopping here is fine. It's actually, it's not quite on there. It's, it's a good place. Um, if I had gone further up, like with these here, there's definitely some of these, they need to go up further, right? Mm -hmm. So let me just get some uh, pigment on. And so for instance, this one's a little bit of a bigger branch. So let's go up with that. I get skinnier, 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 and then so I'm going more and more up on the little tip, and I don't hardly press. And um, there can be some more little branches, and they get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, and this one goes all the way out. Mm. See, that's what I wanted to show you. Mm. Don't stop with all your branches like a half an inch below where the, okay. that is going to look like, all oh, the trees, they're squinching up, they're trying to fit into the picture. <laughs> no, there's a whole world out there, so mm -hmm. they can go through. So it's a good idea. I like it. I try to, mm -hmm. most of my paintings, if you look at them, I'll have mm -hmm. branches going out of the picture. And see, then I love going in like this. Can you see where I vary the strength? Mm -hmm. I have too much fun, I swear. <laughs> I love all that stuff because it all helps. And see, this snow didn't look so good, so then I just fi fix that. And there's, you know, lots of little things you can do. And the same here. Be nice if I can get some branches that go out on this edge. Kind of gives more, I don't know, just looks better. Composition and design. So can you see how slowly and I have probably at least an hour doing all this little stuff on this one but I'm not going to bore you with that so I'm going to show you something else that I like to do on these <coughs> snow paintings especially so now I'm going to go in and mix myself another dark from that French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and not too too much water hopefully there we are and it's a lot of times where there's these trees, there'll be some little, Switches. yeah, twigs, bushes, whatever. And so get some of those in, that really looks lovely. And it's great if you can also overlap, so now you can overlap the snow white right? because they're in front of the fence. So these little twigs will go over the fence, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can do a bunch of those, however many you feel like. And some of them can just be little ones because, you know, they're little ones, big, they can be big ones. And just the only thing, don't do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Don't do that. <laughs> just saying. I don't know. It's like just... a waft to me. I don't know. <laughs> so, and then I just want to go a little bit higher on this one. And then here could also be a bunch of little ones little siblings suckers i got some of those what coming up around my fruit yeah. trees what i you, cannot what call them? Oh, yes <laughs> my, me too oh, saplings are little things but suckers like she They're said suckers. 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 suckers suckers spray that i suckers. put on oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> i got some it didn't work yeah. so good it didn't either yeah. Yeah. yeah i go every year a couple times a year oh and cut gosh them. i know and they can grow fast they do and so trees the worst yeah so you can see, can you see how that livens it up a little bit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not so boring then. Um, so yeah, you can do a, bunch, do a bunch of those. And then comes the final fun. So let's see. Now we want to put a little shadow color on. I can use my red that's pinked up a little bit. And uh, let's do some uh, cobalt blue. Are you going to put birds in the tree on this one? Uh, I didn't leave room for the birds on this one here, but I could if I paint it, you know, white. I'm trying to uh, get some French ultramarine blue in. So I'm going for shadow color. Grade down a little bit, maybe like that. That's a good one. 
So I use just some of the blues and I don't want them too, too dark. So let's do some, first of all, we're gonna cast shadow. So right underneath where the trees are, I'm gonna pick it up. And then I'm gonna drag this out and don't do it straight because it follows the contour of the land. There's banks, there's snow banks, right? They're not like flat. Mm -hmm. So we can, we can have a little fun with that. So we can just kind of like that. And they tend to, shadows tend to be darker right underneath the subject matter that's throwing the shadow. And so let's do the other one too. And again, and it's on a little, if the light's coming from here, it's kind of going diagonally across and then, you know, kind of follow the snow banks. It's kind of undulating. And that's, you know, it's my prerogative. I decide, it's my world, right? So I get to decide. There, that's pretty good. And then this little guy will do the same thing. So let's get that in. Okay, so that's those, and then comes the real fun. And that is, get your little liner brush, roll it in your shadow color, dab, dab, and then pick up underneath these here and do some little squigglies. And they don't have to be exactly how they are, but just kind of in general. And here, just pick up underneath. And then this is disappearing in there. Can you see how that just livens up the whole picture? Mm -hmm. The shadows on the fence posts? Yeah, and so I don't, see they're further away, so I don't want to do them as dark. Then I put a little bit more water in. Which one do I want to use? This one? Okay, so I'll probably do it a little bit paler. So I'll take a little bit of this one over here, maybe a little bit of blue in it until I'm satisfied. I think this is kind of a good color. Okay, so I did a little bit already. I don't want it too dark. And so so kind of the same direction. I already had a little bit already, so I have something to, I can follow. And then, wouldn't it be fun? Now, I don't, again, I don't want it too, too dark because it's gonna look not good. And so I can indicate, and again, I'm just wiggling it a little bit because you know, the snow is not straight. And that's the fence casting a shadow. And I think I want to do it on this side. Can you see how that just kind of? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Pick this up a little bit. There. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's kind of. <laughs> and I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna cast a shadow on the on the barn here. I don't want to do that. But you know what you could. Now, I don't really need it. But if I felt I needed it, um, there could be a big tree out here outside, right? And it would be casting a shadow here, and then it goes, don't want it's hmm. too gray. A mystery tree. A mystery tree is outside. We can't see, it's outside of our picture plane here, but got a little too brown. But that could be a tree out there can't see. Dab it a little bit. But can you see how you can do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 
That's fun. And then, of course, the last thing is now I have to put shadow on all these little clumps. A little bit of shadow right where it hits, right where it hits the uh, branch. That's where the shadow is. That says a little bit about the volume of the snow. All these little things is what makes it look real, if you want it to real. Mm -hmm. Just. And there you have it. <laughs>